Hey, Mike from Prep Pros. I've been a full-time tutor for over seven years. I've had a handful of students get perfect 1600s and countless more score in the 99th percentile. And one thing I do to help my students succeed is I am constantly tracking what type of question types are showing up SAT to SAT. I have over 50 tests worth of data here, so I'm gonna predict 10 things that you're absolutely gonna see on your test for March, 2023. The first topic you're gonna see on the March SAT is statistics. And for statistics, there's really three subtopics you wanna be familiar with. The first is standard deviation, the second is margin of error, and the third is the basics of sampling. Now, standard deviation is by far the most common and the most likely to show up on the test, so we're gonna run through one of those questions here. Now, standard deviation really simply measures the spread of a data set. As values are more closely clumped together, they have a smaller standard deviation. As they are more spread out, they have a bigger standard deviation. And a little bit of a pro tip is if you have a bigger range, you almost always have a bigger standard deviation. And that's what we can see on this question here. We can see this bottom data set is more closely clumped together versus the top data set is more spread apart. And that's how I can tell that A is the correct answer. The second topic that you will see is you're gonna get a question asking you to identify intercepts. Now, all you really have to remember for this is if you're ever asked to solve for the x-intercept, simply plug in zero for y. And if you're asked to solve for the y-intercept, which is more common in a question like this, simply plug in zero for x. Now, tricky questions like this, you have to know a little bit of your exponent rules to know that, well, six to the zero is just one. So negative eight times one minus four equals negative 12. That lets us see that A is the correct answer there. Now, our third concept is one that trips tons of students up, and this is interpreting constants. In questions like these, a lot of students just don't understand what they're supposed to be looking for, but there's a very specific set of rules that's gonna let you know exactly what you need to look for if you're looking for no solutions, infinite solutions, or one solution. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna point you somewhere else on my channel where I break down exactly how to approach those questions and solve them really easily, along with our next topic, which is percentages. Now percentages, especially percentages increase and decrease, show up on almost every single SAT. And although it seems like a simple topic, many students end up missing questions like these because they don't actually know the little trick which the SAT is using to throw you off. Now the next type of question you're definitely gonna see is in terms of questions. Now these are really easy. All it's asking you to do, whatever it says in terms of, that's what you're isolating for. So we wanna get N left alone. So first thing here is we need to subtract over that three. So we'll get p minus three equals two over n. Now, if you don't like fractions, easiest thing you can do is cross multiply. So now we'll have n times p minus three equals two. Well, to get n left alone, pretty simply, we have to divide both sides by p minus three, and that's gonna let us see that c is our correct answer there. Now, the sixth topic that you're definitely gonna see on your March SAT is quadratics. Now, there's about 15 different question types within quadratics that the SAT loves to use over and over. Outside the basics of factoring and foiling, they're always kind of moving test to test, but there's a handful that show up more frequently than the rest and often give students trouble, but once you know how to learn them, it's an easy place that you can pick up a lot of points on your math section. Now, these are gonna be the SAT's favorite quadratic question, which requires to use the quadratic formula and watch out for one tricky step. You also wanna be able to know how to quickly find your sum of solutions using a simple formula. Additionally, you wanna make sure you know how to deal with these systems of equations with quadratics, your discriminant rules, as well as your maximums and minimums. Now, I'm not gonna break all of that down in this video because in my free trial, I have in-depth lessons for all of those in the rest of the question types, as well as tons of practice questions. So I'm gonna link that below this video. I strongly recommend checking that out. It can easily improve your score 30 to 40 points don't need a credit card, it's completely free. Now the seventh topic that you're gonna see on test day and one that trips up many students is subject verb agreement. Now, if you're like most students on the writing and language section for any of those grammar questions, you're really just trusting your ear. Now the SAT writes questions like this to trip you up because how we normally talk isn't always grammatically correct. Now, if you said any of A, C, or D are the correct answer to this, you're actually gonna miss a few questions on test day because your ear is gonna guide you wrong. But I would strongly recommend checking out this video up here that I'm linking because there's actually a little bit of a cheat where we can use a pattern in the answer choices without even reading the sentence and identify that B must be correct by playing a game of odd one out. Now the eighth topic that you are 100% gonna see on test day is sentence structure rules. Now for questions like these, the SAT is testing your ability to identify independent versus dependent clauses and know the rules for properly joining them. If you're just trying to do this based off what sounds right or looks right, there's a really good chance you're gonna miss this question. 
Now, all the rules to this are taught in my free trial, but the first person who can explain why the correct answer is correct using those rules of independent and dependent clauses and why the other three are incorrect will win a free month's worth of access to my course. Now, the ninth thing you're gonna see on test day, and this trips up a ton of students, are logical placement questions like these. Now, these often feel very tricky because students try to just read these for flow, but there's a really specific way you can make these a lot easier. And that's to think of it like a word jigsaw puzzle. What you're always looking for are little connectors which tell you where it has to fit. These are gonna be pronouns, transitions, and references. So in this example here, the end of the fifth sentence we see causing the air to expand, well, therefore, the expanding air at the start of sentence two must follow that, so that can tell us that D is the correct answer pretty easily. Some of them are a little bit trickier, but you're always looking for these connectors, and then you're gonna be able to tell very clearly why the right answer is right. The 10th thing that you're gonna see on your test shows up in the writing and language section, and this is what I call an out of order question. Now, it's often one of the first two or three questions of a new writing and language passage, but it asks about the passage as a whole. And in this example, we see question 34 is the very first question. It's asking us which one fits with the content of the rest of the passage. Anytime you see this on test day, simply circle it, work through the rest of the questions of the passage and come back to it. This is a trap that the SAT is laying. Don't fall for it. Now, before we wrap up, this video up here is where you can learn about constants for the no, infinite, and one solution, along with those percent increase and decrease questions, along with a handful of other topics which show up on most SATs. So that can easily help you pump up your math score even more. Now, if this video helped you out, please like, subscribe, comment any questions you guys have, share this with your friends. It helps it push it out there and help more people on the SAT. One video that I've considered doing is a video for advanced topics which I give around a 50% chance of showing up on an SAT. So if you guys would like to see that as well, let me know in the comments.